For several years now, Arsenal have been, unfortunately, and perhaps unfairly, a bit of a laughing stock of the wider footballing community. There was a time when the Gunners would step on Manchester United's toes and get away with it. The likes of Patrick Vieira, Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp and Robert Pires ushered the North London Giants to an era of prosperity under the watchful eye of Arsene Wenger. Even during the last few years of the Frenchman's reign, the Gunners were a shadow of their former selves. We all remember those times when Arsenal fans were laughed at every time they finished in the top four, and some went even so far to say that perhaps finishing fourth in the league every year was something that the club treated as a trophy. Those days are definitely behind us, but in all honesty, things haven't really looked up since. For one reason or another, Arsenal have simply struggled to achieve anything of note. Even Champions League qualification has become a task. The Gunners didn't play Champions League last season and will miss out again next season. When Unai Emery was named as the club's manager, the Spaniard was expected to bring his best qualities into the dressing room and get the best out of a team that boasts a lot of potential but delivers very little. The Spaniard was fired in his second season at the club. The former PSG man's firing led to rumours that perhaps Massimiliano Allegri would become the new occupant of a really hot managerial seat at the Emirates. But lo and behold, the Gunners pulled perhaps the greatest trick they have in recent years. Somehow, the club's technical director and former player, Edu, convinced Mikel Arteta to stop being Pep Guardiola's assistant and start acting like a manager for real. Indeed, the Spaniard's footballing acumen is second to none, and he was for a fact Guardiola's main man as Manchester City continued dominating the Premier League. The former Arsenal midfielder always harboured ambitions of managing the club one day and after missing out on the post a couple of years ago, did not hesitate when his beloved club came calling. His apprenticeship under Guardiola was finished. Arteta was ready to take the next step. Since he'd never managed any club, there was scepticism if the move itself would actually work out. Throw in the fact that he was being given the keys to a squad that's been in a perpetual state of flux for the last decade and you'd empathise with the Spaniard. Being the head coach of Arsenal was always going to be a test, but after lifting the FA Cup, Arteta has proven that he's definitely onto something here. So let's take a look at who Arteta is as a coach and what he's achieved, shown and proven in his first eight or so months as the club's head coach. Just like Unai Emery, Arteta has been given the title of a head coach and not manager. While this would make you think that he has no say in the transfer market, it's not exactly like that. Arteta has a say in what sort of players are recruited, but his main focus is on how the team does on the training field and how it can improve performance on the pitch. And in all honesty, Arteta's done a great job at that so far. The Spaniard has been very clear and to the point when it comes to his expectations from his players. For instance, if you look at the performances of David Luiz and Granit Xhaka ever since Arteta came in, the two men act like quarterbacks for the likes of Bukayo Saka and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Ainsley Maitland-Niles was a talent who is still searching for his best role. The youngster now plays as more of an inverted fullback. During the February winter break, Arteta was able to put his stamp all around the training facilities. This mini break allowed the coaching staff to implement the head coach's ideas, which then became quite evident once football returned after a three-month hiatus. The likes of Dani Ceballos and Nicolas Pepe, two men who were clearly struggling under Emery, started becoming more influential. But that was not all of it. The Gunners' style of play changes depending on the type of scenario that's put in front of them. While a back three can essentially be seen as a sign of teams that don't want to concede another one, Arteta's back three is actually a dangerous weapon that aims to nullify opponents and stay on the front foot at all times. This particular aspect was quite evident throughout their FA Cup run. Of course, improvements are needed and Arteta was at times forced to find other ways when things got a little rough. That, as a consequence, impacted creativity. During the Unai Emery days, you would be losing a lot of money if you made a bet on Arsenal's starting eleven. So much was the constant tinkering with the first eleven that the team never really gelled. Arteta, on the other hand, has been more or less consistent with the players he wants to start. With 13 games in 45 days, the team's core was always the same, which is why Arsenal were able to seal a Europa League spot. One of the biggest successes was the return to form of Shkodran Mustafi, who started looking more assured before suffering a hamstring injury. Dani Ceballos and Granit Xhaka started playing alongside one another more regularly, which improved things for both men. Aubameyang's importance to the team cannot be stressed enough. The Gabon international started all the games except for the one against Liverpool. Some of Arteta's decisions can be questioned. For instance, in his first game against Chelsea, the Gunners started brilliantly and should have scored a couple of goals. However, after Frank Lampard made a few tweaks in his game plan, Arsenal were found out. 
The team had already spent a lot of effort during the first half and they huffed and puffed towards a 2-1 defeat. But in all such games, it became clear that Arsenal had the ability and wherewithal to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against the best teams in the league. The only thing they would need is to make their moments count. And the way they're playing, those moments are going to be far less sporadic than when they were during Emery's reign. If there's one thing that Arteta could do well, it would be reading in game situations. In the games against Brighton, Leicester and Aston Villa, the Spaniard did make a few bad calls. For instance, taking off Ceballos against Leicester gave the Foxes a chance to exploit space in the midfield, and they eventually equalised. Similarly, in the North London derby, Arteta made changes during the 70th and 84th minutes, which was not enough time for substitutes to make any visible impact. One can say that Arteta needs to go for a deep dive in his squad and look at those moments where his decisions affected the result on the pitch. One thing that Arteta has done brilliantly is his man management of Xhaka. The Switzerland international was edging closer to being anointed the title of Judas at the Emirates after his war of words with the club's fan base. The midfielder was stripped of his captaincy and was very close to leaving. However, Arteta had a good discussion with Xhaka and since then, all of us have seen how the former Borussia Mönchengladbach man has played. Matteo Guendouzi is a hugely talented player. Sadly though, the young Frenchman's attitude is not right at all. After his outburst at Brighton, the midfielder was reportedly given a dressing down. In fact, Guendouzi has apparently been given sufficient chances to make amends. Things haven't changed but Arteta has been very firm. Under Emery, the likes of Bukayo Saka and Gabriel Martinelli were doing really well. However, under Arteta, the duo became Premier League regulars. The Spaniard clearly trusts the younger players more than his predecessor. In a similar vein, the likes of Reese Nelson, Joe Willock and Eddie Nketiah have sped up their development and are going to get better. All this was made possible because of Arteta's eye for identifying talent. Arsenal do have a talented group of youngsters who can achieve a lot for the club. The talent was always there, but the ability to harness it wasn't. Thankfully, Arteta's arrival has booked the trend and now the club's young charges are playing under an astute tactician who knows exactly how to develop them further without running the risk of burning them out. While many people question the decision to extend David Luiz's contract, it's clear that Arteta made the right call. The Spaniard sees the effect the Brazilian has on the team's younger players and wants him to stay around for a little while longer. Reportedly, Willian is also in line for a move to the Emirates, and having another experienced player will only help the younger players develop at a faster rate. While it's still early days, it's clear how Arteta envisions Arsenal to be like in the coming months. The club is focused on developing young players and having experienced players alongside them to guide them throughout the whole process. And although it might be a very challenging task, early signs seem to suggest that Arteta is the right man to lead the Gunners and could perhaps revive their fortunes after a decade of mediocrity.